Martin, it's good to have you uh, on the program today. So let's start with flashpoints. And what really are flashpoints? Right. It's interesting to note that um, in the last few days, the Ghana Police Service head, that's the IGP, has met with a team called the Electoral uh, the Election Task Force. Now, their job primarily is to ensure that we have a very peaceful atmosphere across the country during the days of voting. The other issue of uh, note is that the conversation about flashpoints has varied depending on which area you're talking about. So flashpoints, like you asked, primarily is uh, a place or an area where the police, based on intelligence, or the security services based on intelligence, can uh, have identified some key concerns about whether or not it's a volatile area, whether or not there has ever been... Um, some confrontation or a fight between two people, it may not necessarily be a political reason why the fight broke out. It could be tribal, it could be religious, but whatever it is, the security agencies have identified that this particular area is quite volatile, which means the slightest issue could trigger and degenerate into some level it is of violence. Is it also possible that these areas could be swing regions as well? It's also a possibility. Mm. So we have specific regions and the number of flashpoints identified in those regions. And from what we have assessed since 92 up until now, the flashpoints actually keep changing. There are some places that are constant flashpoints flash or constant volatile areas mm. that the police have identified. Mm. But then different issues and different situations cause places that were ordinarily peaceful and mm. okay mm. to also become flashpoints based on the criteria right. that is used to judge them. Mm. And we actually would want to go um, back to the specific areas or systems where we are going to be looking at as to when exactly they started identifying an area as a flashpoint. Mm. So, for instance, we know that uh, when you come to the... Probably want to start from this. So these are the key numbers we are looking at. Right. So in 2020, the Electoral Commission, which is the election management body mm. themselves, mm. have a team that go around to assess which... Uh, because they'll be conducting, they'll be deploying people to almost every and cranny of the mm, country. So mm. they need to be sure the safety of their staff mm. and gauge what exactly is on the ground. The EC in 2020 said that 9,644 places had been identified as flashpoints. Mm. However, that number has been reviewed downwards. The National Election Security Task Force in 2020 had also said that they had, uh, um, they had uh, identified, found, identified mm. 6,178 flashpoints. So the numbers actually vary, mm. and they varied in 2020. Mm. But if you look at the, as of 2024, this year's election, the EC has come out to say that they have now identified 7,250. For the 2024 election, 7,250. If you compare that to 9,644, so yes, mm. there has been a reduction mm. in the areas of concern for the Electoral Commission. The National Security Task Force is yet to tell us there are numbers they have identified for this year's election. But as of 2020, it was 6,178 flashpoints that they had identified as a national security task force. Now let's look at the original breakdown of these numbers. Mm. And in 2020, the Ashanti region had the highest flashpoints. It's interesting that during electioneering period, how did you hear of some confrontation in the Ashanti region? Mm. Hardly. Mm. However, based on the criteria that the security agencies used or the electoral commission used they say the ashanti region actually has a number of flash in fact the most flashpoints mm. in the country mm. and that's how it breaks down central region follows next mm. eastern region mm. then greater accra mm. it's interesting that greater accra is fourth mm. but ashanti is one if you yeah, and that's one of the things we'll be seeking explanation uh, from adam bona on because the ashanti region we know is not really a swing region it's yeah. a it's a it's a safe seat for the NPP, whether presidential or parliamentary. Central, we can understand because it's a swing region. Mm -hmm. uh, the eastern region also is a safe, safe seat for, for the eastern NPP. Region. So I, I wonder why the, yeah. the eastern Ashanti are hotspots. Yes, and mm. I, I actually touched on that because if you mm. look at Greater Accra and Ashanti region, mm. they are the regions with the most registered voters. Okay. They have the highest number of registered voters. Mm. And you would have ordinarily thought that maybe Greater Accra should either be up or just mm. after Ashanti, right. but that is not. Mm. However, we know that the most notable um, flashpoints mm. that 
over the years, we've heard about like Odo Dio Dio. Right. He's in the Greater Accra region. Ayo, so also West Wog. I'm sure he'll be coming so there shortly. Although these mm. regions all have uh, individual flashpoints, mm. the Ashanti region has recorded the most or has the most. Mm. And then it tells you that every region has a place of concern. Mm. It goes down in Western, Volta, mm. OT, almost mm. every region of the 16, mm. they have places where the volatility level is quite high mm. and where either tribal or religious issues could trigger so, violence. So the, the reasons are quite peculiar to it's very region, right. Yeah, mm. and you know that in Nkwanta, which is in the Volta region, mm. uh, which is in the OT region, mm. for instance, there is currently a curfew there. Mm. In the Upper East region, there is Boko, there's a curfew there. Mm. So it tells you that even these places, although elections may take place there, security attention would be doubled or tripled so that you, people can still be allowed to exercise their franchise, mm. but in a more secure environment, so that the miscreants and of, do in not Quanta, take advantage That brings me to a recent article I read about Pram Pam, which also is likely to be a hot spot for the 2024 elections because of the purported dispute with SALT, you yes, know, with the electric the plan area. and the people. Yeah. And so that has also been identified as a hot spot coming into, going into the 2024 elections. Absolutely. So mm. these are the regional breakdowns. Mm. And uh, like we indicated, the EC says that total number of flashpoints has actually reduced mm. to 7,200, which is still quite concerning. Mm. So we'll try and see how the EC intends to deal with these concerns of um, flashpoints in the country. Uh, are you going to supply now, us with specific details yes. regarding constituencies where these hotspots may be located? Exactly. So mm. we will go into that now. So mm. Talency, for instance, mm. constantly... When an analysis is done of which areas are flashpoints, talency comes up. Mm. But I want to look at how the voting has been in that area. Mm. Although it's a, it's a tricky area, uh, security concerns come mm. up almost every mm. time, people still go out to vote, mm. which means the security is increased to allow people to go out and mm. exercise their mandate. And this is how they voted over time. Since 96, it's remained green? Yes, up, up until, until 2016. 2016. And if you look at the increase in votes mm. for the 2020, it's quite sharp. Quite so, significant. And it, it raises the concern of what exactly must have happened between 2016 and 2020. Mm. 2016, the NDC won, although Nanado Danko Akufado was president, mm. national vote, mm. Akufado won. But no, he wasn't president, it was John Muhammad in 2016. In 2016 yeah. elections. In the elections. Yes, in the elections. Okay, okay, all right. Akufuado won yes. the national elections. Yes. In talents, he got 61% of the vote. And um, I beg your pardon, NBC got 61%. Got 61%. Yes. Right. And then MPP got 20. And then in 2020, they just... Then in 2020... Everything over 10. And the shock... Change. Right. And that's the first time that Talency has voted presidentially for the NPC. So it is understandable why Talency will be a hotspot. Yes. Because especially between 2016, 2020, and mm. going into 2024, mm. a number of dynamics may have mm. now come into mm. the free. Because naturally the back. NDC will think that this is a safe seat for exactly. them. Exactly. And they want to get it back. And they would want to get it back. So a lot more activity will go on, a lot mm. more campaigning. And mm. you know, when there are heightened political activities, mm. there's a likelihood that it might infringe on people's rights. People might feel that you are disturbing them. If it's a safe NDC seat, why should MPP come there? Mm. To allow? That is why maybe the National Commission on Civic Education, NCC for instance, needs to drum home the act that everybody has the freedom of expression, freedom right. to vote or do whatever it is they, do, mm. they want to do within the, the remit of the law. The pattern is quite significant. Just look at it. The, the, the votes of the NDC kept dwindling uh, from 2016, dwindling. And started down, having down, a quite a rise. You know, and then yeah. goes down in 2020. So that's the what talency we constituency. Then we also have Ayasu West Coast, the infamous Ayasu West Coast. Right. And you would recall that ahead of the, 2020, the 2016 elections, there was quite some violence there. Mm. And some of these constituencies have also had by-elections. Mm. Now, some of the criteria the security agencies use to check whether a constituency or a region is a hotspot or mm. a polling station is a hotspot include past election activities. Mm. If they've ever recorded any kind of electoral violence, mm. it is noted down mm. and then immediate action is taken. Look at how close our West Coast The margin of been. votes. It's extremely close. So mm. even in 2008, it was 48.7 and 48.6 for that was the close. Extremely that was close. close. A year after that in 2012, although John Mahama had a lot of sympathy votes to become the president of the day, they wanted by probably it was very marginal. Very, very marginal in 2012. Percentage points. Mm. Then in 2016, Anna Kufado 
comes into power again. And are you talking about presidential support. here? This is presidential, this is presidential right? Okay. This pre okay. presidential right. numbers. Mm. The MPP gets a swell because people thought that it was a good time to of give him a chance. 2016 was huge. Then he had 56. He won there. In 2020, that was close. People actually started changing their minds mm, again mm, in terms of the votes mm, they are given, and mm, thought they mm, had done a mistake mm, and wanted to mm. change it. So it was extremely close. The NDC got 49.5%. Uh, 40, mm. The MPP got 49.8%. Just about 0.3%. Uh, very, difference. very marginal. Extremely close. And, and you That's can understand why this area, Ayawas West Wagon, is a hot spot ahead yeah. of the 2024 elections. You've got to keep your eyes closely monitoring and it's, this. It's even uh, also interesting to know that they are the latest violence that has been in the media where a commission was set up to investigate was, was not was. even mm. a national election. Mm. It was a by election, election right. that led to that level of mm. violence. So for the national one, security agencies need to pay particular attention. So I'm Memphis Central, Central, where is that? That's in the central, central region. Central region, right. And the, again, one party has dominated since 96 mm. up until... It's, it's been green since 1996. Yes. They have been close shaves mm -hmm. in 2004. And then now in 2016, the tables almost turned. But in 2020, it actually turned completely. So in this kind blue. of area, yeah, it went blue. So in a Memphis Central, the MPP won the presidential votes by 58.1%. The NDC got 39.6%. Uh, and this is also one of the flashpoints that... EC and the Electoral um, Task Force have identified. And it because is because the NDC has traditionally seen this as a safe seat for them. Yes. Right. So no matter how close the margin, they mm. think that it's an NDC area. Mm. And when the opponent in that constituency or that region intensifies their political activities, it naturally would upset some people. Mm. So it's high time we increase um, you know, citizen education to know that allow people, especially in electioneering years, to go about their political activities very safely. Then we can also go to Ewutu Senya. Ewutu Senya, Senya is that's also, also in, in the, the central se region, I exactly. think. Exactly. Yeah. Now, three days ago, mm. we got reports that the electoral commission in the, in the constituency was changing the collation center. The collation center is where all the polling station results will be tabulated mm. for us to be told who has won parliamentary and presidential. The EC is changing it. Mm. The NDC raised the concern that they had not been told mm. of the change. However, they are key stakeholders in the election, so they, may, they must be in the know when a critical decision like that is to be taken. Yeah. And this is also because they have realized this kind of trend. Based on the 2016 numbers and the 2020 numbers, mm. they probably have some level of confidence that mm. they might just cross into the, the 50 percent man mm. and win it right. for the first time maybe right but it's it's been uh, traditionally an npp yes uh, npp has won the Utu senior east a number of times so the 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 security agencies are also paying attention to this mm. because if the margins are closed you want to pay attention there because if presidentially whichever number you win by you are safe through mm. parliamentary elections because you probably need one extra vote or two votes to win it's a keenly contested seat. Mm. That is why the security agent need to pay particular attention to some of these uh, areas we are talking about. Ewutu Senya West, the issue I raised about mm. the EC changing the collation center mm. was in Ewutu Senya East and West. Okay. Okay. So it is, look at how this map looks like over time. It's been a crisscross. Yeah. Very interesting mm. swing constituency. Mm. So we need that a lot more attention needs to go here where, mm. look at these anybody by win this seat. Anybody, by anybody. Mm. Very close. So mm. they need to give particular mm. attention to it. Mm. Then the very famous Odo 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 Odo. right? A very comfortable seat for the NDC. Oh my! Odo 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 went blue. Yes. In 2020. Exactly. And although, so it adds up to the general tally of Greater Accra, mm. where NDC won the region mm. but did not win the national election. Mm. And it tells you, and even before this, people doing health work, people doing regular campaign activities, mm. there is violence. Mm. So even before the main elections, they need to be. Uh, there need to be an increased security attention mm. in the area mm. because we always talk about the do do the name always rings a bell it the the things people say about them are not always political violence also comes up every now and then when you're talking about that constituency so the security agencies are paying close mm. attention to that as well so these are some of the key constituencies right very very interesting martin uh, just monitored. hold on for me let me go live onto zoom now 